What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at the upcoming CRPG launching on September 7th, Encased. So Encased is a very much so Fallout inspired turn-based CRPG, again launching on the 7th here in a couple days. And while I have actually made a similar video to this before for the game, as it was in beta and then early access, that was actually several years ago, as the game has been in early access for two years due to some delays, but is finally being launched after the voiceover was wrapped up. And I figured since that video was done several years ago, and frankly wasn't up to today's standards, so to speak, would take another look at it. The game itself will be $30, and the general premise is that you are going to be exploring the dome. The dome is a very, very large dome that was found in the desert that seems to belong to some precursor race. Now, what it actually does, or who this race was, nobody knows. The thing was empty and abandoned when it was found. However, it's also only semi-permeable. So a company's been set up called Cronus to basically explore and ship relics back. However, once people go in the dome, they can't actually leave afterwards. Only items can go back out of the dome. So Cronus has been employing people to go in, find these relics so people can study them and make technological advances, and send them back out of the dome. However, at the cost of people going in there, basically have to live the rest of their lives there. Now, we take the place of one of these employees entering the dome at first. I say at first because a short ways into the game, like literally the prologue of the game, the dome wakes up, so to speak, and turns the area into a bit of a wasteland and shuts off communication with the outside. So what we see is a sort of modern post-apocalypse, while everything inside the dome is shut off and kind of a wasteland of sorts. As far as we know, everything outside of the dome continues as normal, which is like 1970s era. Character creation-wise, we can choose from a few pre-generated characters, and these characters are divided up into wings. This is like the part of the Kronos organization that you were actually employed by. Uh, this will give you bonuses to certain things as well as kind of dictate your social status, so to speak, with Blackwing being kind of like the security arm, Blue Wing being the engineers, White Wing being like researchers and medical staff, Silver Wing being the administrators, that type of stuff. So for the most part, beyond that, it's all kind of stuff you would expect. You pick attributes, of course, and the only really unique one here is uh, Psyche. Psyche actually affects psychic damage and resistance, which is part of the dome, because the dome itself has activated latent psychic powers in some people. And then we get to choose our abilities. This is very standard RPG stuff. Criminal, which is going to let you lockpick and gamble. Science, which is going to let you hack computers, things like that. There's a piloting skill, because you will actually be able to get vehicles and things in the game as well as things like charisma and leadership type stuff that it's going to allow you to effectively manage a party because you will be able to take up your two companions with you and have a party of three. But these abilities themselves use a tag system, which means you get to tag three of them, and this will give them a plus 20 point boost, kind of giving you a good start with those particular abilities. And the abilities themselves are divided up into combat and applied. Combat, of course, being like your weapon abilities, things like that, and applied being more like exploration-based kind of stuff. And these are further divided up into tiers. So every 30 points you put into a skill, you're going to unlock the next set of abilities for that skill. So with weapons, this is types of damage or special weapon abilities that kind of thing and then with the applied skills it's things like being able to lock pick higher locks being able to persuade and charm your way out of situations better set traps all that kind of stuff and then last for character creation we have traits this is very much so the benefit and trade-off for a detriment kind of thing so you can give your character a benefit while simultaneously making them less good at something for instance the dark lord one makes you do 20 percent more damage per companion in your party However, your companions level up slower. Now the combat itself is again turn-based and you will have at max a party of three. But overall, pretty straightforward system, honestly. There are, of course, the weapon skills themselves, as well as the abilities you gain from your weapon, as well as things like throwables. You will find grenades, you can set traps, you can go into stealth mode to set up, you know, like a sneak attacks and assassination type stuff. And while it is turn-based, it functions off of an action point system similar to the early Fallout games, as well as more recently Divinity Original Sin 2. And overall, I had a lot of fun with it. There's actually a lot of fun weapon variety later in the game. Things like flamethrowers, power fists. They use a version of Fallout-inspired power armor, but it's called like a servo shell. But essentially, it's power armor. And that leads us to the actual exploration. So the map itself is actually a world map, and you'll go in and zone into areas, which is fairly common for CRPGs. But after the prologue, when the dome kind of wakes up and turns the place into a wasteland to explore, 
you can start interacting with factions that have since taken up residence, and these are usually formed from the wings from the prior era, shall you say, that have then kind of gone off and turned themselves into little factions and bastions of civilization inside the dome. And then you have your more raider-like fashion called like the fops. Now, in addition to these things, radiation is a problem. A lot of the area is irradiated. So you'll have to find ways to deal with that. On top of things like anomalies, anomalies actually remind me of the stalker type anomalies because that's kind of what they are. You can use bolts to throw at them and set them off because if you step into them, they're going to deal a bunch of damage to your character, but they're kind of like supernatural phenomenon that are dangerous to you. In addition, there's crafting and you can also find relics laying around. Relics are items you can equip on your character or at least carry around on you that have random special effects. And these relics are basically what Cronus was actually trying to get out of the dome and research. They are things that warp reality in some ways. Some of them alter the flow of time and other fantastical things. And out in the world, you'll be able to put your skills to use. So I've found that most of the skills are very well represented. So do you want to be an engineer from Blue Wing who focuses on shotguns and setting traps for enemies? Or do you want to be a Black Wing kind of all-in guns blazing kind of guy? Or do you want to be a more assassin-focused character? Do you want to be an ex-criminal from the Orange Wing who focuses on just hitting things? You can do low intelligence playthroughs. And honestly, overall, there's just a lot of choice that you can approach this game with. You can play solo. You can play with a leadership build. So they've really gone above and beyond as far as that part goes. That said, overall, more of a double A experience. I think it's going to be a very good tight experience. Again, 30 bucks. It's a little on the short side. However, overall, I think it's a very fun, competent experience and entry into the CRPG genre. All of that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.